Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I've got to tell you, I love it when video ideas on my channel just come really naturally. Like one just kind of rolls right into the next idea. And when I was doing my video about long wearing makeup essentials, and I had mentioned using a Chanel powder with an e.l.f. brush, this process, I refer to this as Chanel, but a lot of you enjoyed that idea. I thought, you know, that is just the tip of the iceberg with low-end or drugstore type makeup brands that I love to pair with a higher end or more expensive item. Sometimes high-end people will look at certain brands like let's say Benefit and say oh that's not really a high-end or luxury brand but for the purposes of this video you know one of the items that I talk about is going to clearly be a drugstore price range and the other is going to be more expensive so let's look at it that way. And I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way but I really get a kick out of seeing two products work so so well together and sometimes it's like they need one another but they're from drastically different price ranges. I just love when that happens and I know many of you who watch my channel are users of both you know drugstore and high-end makeup so maybe you've got some ideas of great product pairings that you can share with me in the comments section or maybe you have some of these things in your stash and just haven't thought to use them together yet. So first combo I want to mention pertains to my concealer and some of you probably could have predicted this one. Um, I'm talking about Benefit Erase Paste, which is my creamy peachy corrector for the under eye area, and my Milani Multitasker Powder in Light Medium. This is just a pairing that has really, really stood out to me as being perfect for one another because this concealer is so rich and creamy. I dab it on the under eye area, and then I use this Light Medium Multitasker Powder, which be warned, you can go too far with this. You really want to use a light hand, and I'll use like my um, e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush with it because I feel like it just lays down just the right amount of product. And these two things are the definition of different kinds of products that I think need one another. This Benefit Erase Paste, it's great coverage and that medium tone is just wonderful in terms of how peachy it is, but it is so emollient it really needs to be set with something. And the Milani Multitasker Powder can be a little bit on the heavy side and I think it performs best when it's setting something that is more on the moisturizing side. And just the wear is better, it looks less cakey, less heavy. So these two products together I think are great. Just going in order of like application on the face, I have to mention in case you did miss my other video, the e.l.f. and the Chanel product that I put together. It's the Double Perfection Lumiere Powder in 32 Beige Rose. This is kind of a newer product to my collection. I just decided, hey, I want to try a really pricey powder and see if it's that much better than a lot of the drugstore powders that I use. And this powder is truly amazing. It's so soft. It's got great coverage. It looks really flawless on the skin without feeling super heavy. And I think this brush from e.l.f., this complexion brush, is perfect for this. And don't get me wrong, this brush is perfect for a lot of things. Like, it's just a very versatile size and shape. I see this often as a powder brush, but it's not one of those super full round ones. It's also very nicely tapered down the sides, so when you set it in a product like a powder and you kind of set it down sideways, it's picking up product all the way down the side of the brush. And it's ideal for the way I like to apply this powder because when I'm going on top of an area that's already been concealed, I just dab it. Then over the rest of the face, it's more of like a sweeping motion. I haven't found myself really wanting to uh, buff in this powder in a circular motion or really lay it on super heavy in that way. I just do kind of a light sweeping over other areas of the face. And that, for whatever reason, gives me the most flawless look. If you are a makeup snob out there, and you can totally get on board with this powder, but you're thinking, oh, there's no way I'm going to use an e.l.f. brush. The e.l.f. complexion brush is just fantastic. It can be highlight, it can be bronzer, it can even be blush. It's just that versatile for the shape that it is. Next duo of products that I love together is from City Color and Bobbi Brown. So this is an awesome cheek duo. So excited to tell you guys about this because I figured this out uh, just a couple weeks ago that I love these two together. And the City Color B Matte Blushes first off. Fabulous pigmentation. I first discovered these at my local Five Below store. They had actually quite an impressive stock of City Color stuff. There are some very bright colors in the line, and then you've got some of these understated, little bit neutral shades that just do the most unexpected pretty things for your face. And this is the shade called Papaya. I pop this on with my Milani blush brush, and then just with that same brush, I go into my Shimmer Brick from Bobbi Brown in the shade Nectar, and I just dab it 
all throughout the compact and then brush it on right over where I've placed uh, the Be Matte Blush. And that combination I think is just so, so flattering. Um, I don't think the Shimmer Brick goes over the top with the glowy shimmer, but it's just enough. And I tell you, since I've had my Shimmer Brick in Nectar, I've been layering it over so many different things. And there are a lot of things it looks pretty with, but this has been um, my favorite pairing so far. Next product duo is a fusion between Maybelline and Too Faced. And this uh, duo was born from my Shop My Stash makeup drawer, my little top drawer where I put things that are sometimes old, sometimes new, and just things I want to make a point to use. And one of those items was this little loose shadow that came with the Too Faced Vegas Nay Stardust palette. And it's called the um, Glamour Dust in Nude Beam. And it is just kind of a nude, light beige, very shimmery, loose powder shadow. And so I thought, how can I best put that to use? And this Maybelline Color Tattoo from the Leathers Collection, which was a matte collection um, in creamy beige. I just hadn't used this product very much, and I knew that I just wanted that creamy base for the loose shadow. So the way I pull this off is I use this little Real Techniques shading brush. I love those synthetic brushes for cream shadows like this. And I use the Color Tattoo not only all over the lid, but up into the crease as well. I swear this is like the easiest look ever. Just blend it out so there aren't any harsh edges. And once you get that on, you can take your Glamour Dust and Nude Beam, and I just like to use my finger, and really, you want the feeling of pressing it onto the lid. And that way, you don't notice a lot of fallout. You can do a little bit at a time and kind of build it up, but this shade is so pretty, and this is like an effortless, glamorous look is the way I look at it. So I am a big fan of those two together, and hopefully that gives you a little easy, super simple idea of how to use your Glamour Dust. Next, we are combining Milani with Charlotte Tilbury, and this is a lip combo that I discovered during the pageant week when I was judging, and I kind of forgot to mention this in with some long-wearing lip recommendations a couple videos ago, but these two products I do think are just meant for each other. They are the perfect lip look. If you want to splurge or you already have splurged on the Bond Girl Matte Revolution lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury, it's a beautiful shade. I find it to be very neutral, just a little bit on the deep side. It's like a deep, dusty rose. But if you spent your money on that and you want a more affordable lip liner that's just perfect with it, go for the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in Spice. And I, I mean, long before the NYX Slide On liners, which I love so much, one of my first lip liner loves was this particular pencil from Milani in Spice. And it's the perfect deep neutral. It looks great with a lot of different nude lip looks, just making a nude lip a little more wearable. But part of why I love these two together so much is just the totally locked in staying power. Both of these things on their own have pretty good staying power, but I swear it all goes up a notch when you wear them together. I like a little bit of a balm or something to moisturize my lips beforehand and then go on with the Color Statement Lip Liner and Spice, fill in the entire lip area, and then take your Bond Girl lipstick, which I find to be just a little more rosy than the lip liner, but the two coordinate really nicely and just go over the top of everything. Everything. And it's like you've got this pretty matte lip, but it's not too heavy. It's not too dry. It definitely feels comfortable on your lips, but it lasts so darn long. You won't find yourself reaching for product to keep touching up. Now, the last thing that I want to mention, I'm so sad that I don't have one of the items here because I just repurchased. Like, the order is on its way. It might even get here later today. But my Huda Beauty lashes in the Samantha style. I love those lashes. I got those lashes for Christmas. I use them very consistently and they lasted me all the way through the end of April. So that was one set of lashes. Very high quality stuff, like a really, it's a beautiful style. It's probably one of the more natural styles offered in the Huda Beauty line, but they are a $20 set of lashes. And I do like wearing them with my drugstore lash glue, the Revlon Precision Lash Glue. Don't think that just because you splurged on a certain set of lashes that you need to also have an expensive glue to wear with them because this glue just with anything, I mean, I got in some conversations with people at the meetup talking about false lashes and which styles are best and, you know, which products are best to use with them. Whatever lash style you choose, I think you will make the process 
10 times easier on yourself if you use it with this lash glue. And what makes it so special is the wand applicator, but also the formula. It doesn't take forever to dry. And when you use the wand applicator, you get just the right amount across the lash band. And then you don't have to wait, but you know, maybe between 15 and 30 seconds before you actually set them on your lash line. So it's just a great thing. And I am excited to get my new Samantha lashes in. And you might be wondering what happened to the old ones? Like, did they eventually just fall apart? And what happened was I was removing some of the glue from the lash band. And I think I got a little bit overzealous with that. And I actually actually pulled off like the little end segment of lashes that was on there and so I thought all right their time has come it's been a, it's been a good like season with these lashes I think I can you know stand to get a new pair now thank you guys so so much for watching this video something a little different but I mean I am one who truly loves using makeup from all price ranges and I think it's so like satisfying when you take that product that you spent a lot of money on and you pair it with something just dirt cheap and the two work wonderfully together it just goes to show, you know, you don't have to just stick to one thing or the other. If you are into high-end makeup and you love doing your full face of 100% high-end makeup, you know, good for you. But just know that there are some drugstore things floating around that work really well too. So thank you again and I will see you very soon. Bye!